composition of dinitrogen monoxide, uh, dinitrogen pentoxide, I'm sorry, at a constant temperature, at a constant T, gave the following data, gave the following kinetic data. Okay, so we have, let's see, T is going to be in seconds, and then of course our concentration. Now, if you don't mind, um, I, I actually tire of doing the whole brackets for concentration. Um, I just like to put parentheses for concentration. I'm gonna sort of go back and forth between them. I hope you understand um, what it means. So when we're, we're talking about kinetics, a parenthesis around a species like dinitrogen pentoxide is actually going to mean concentration. Normally, it's true. A square bracket is concentration. I shouldn't be so reckless, but I am. Okay, so the concentration of N2O5, and this is in moles per liter, as always. Concentration is in moles per liter when you see it like that. Okay, so we're going to do 0 seconds, 50 seconds, 100 seconds, 200 seconds, 300 seconds and 400. And the data we have is we start with an initial concentration of 0 0.100, uh, four decimal places, 0 0.0707, 0 0.0500, 0 0.0250, 0 0.0400, 0 0.0400, 0 0.0400, 0 0.0600, and 0 0.00625. So this is the kinetic data that we collected. <clears throat> um, at different time intervals, we measure the concentration of reactant left in the flask, and these are the concentrations that we got. Now, we want to know what the order of this reaction is, and we want to know what the rate constant is. So, let's go ahead and start. Now, what we're going to do, in order to find the order, we said that we're going to plot the logarithm of the concentration versus the time y versus x. Whenever you see something versus something, it's always y versus x. So this is going to be the y-axis. This is going to be the x-axis. Actually, the logarithm of this is going to be the y-axis. So let's make a new table. Draw a little line here, and this time I'll do the table in blue. And it's going to be the same thing. The time is going to be the same thing. It's going to be 0, 50, 100, 200, 300 and 400, and now we're going to take logarithms of these numbers. So when we take the logarithms of those numbers, we end up with the following data. This is going to be ln of the N2O5 concentration in moles per liter. We end up with minus 2.3, minus 2.6, minus 3, minus 3.7, minus 4.4, and minus 5. So now we're going to plot this. So we have our y-axis, our x-axis, this is our time, this is going to be our logarithm of the N205 concentration, and we'll just put some numbers up here. So negative 6, uh, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. So minus 6, minus 4, minus 2, <coughs> And we'll go 100, 200, 300, 400. This is 100 seconds. The, oops, all these lines are showing up again. It seems to always happen down at the bottom of the page. It's kind of interesting. All right. So 100, 200, 300, and 400 seconds. When we plot this data, we actually end up getting something which is... Uh, let's go down to... Down to about right. Eh, let's go about right there. I guess that's pretty good. Believe it or not, we actually do end up with a straight line with all of these different points at various points. Now, I should let you know, this is kinetic data. Kinetic data is not always going to line up in an exactly straight line. It's not going to be that the line is going to go through every single point exactly, but it's going to be pretty good. You're going to get a linear correlation, so you should be able to draw a line. In other words, you're not going to get points all over the place. You are going to be able to draw a line through many of the points. So don't think that it has to be exact. Real kinetic data, like real science, is not, you know, doesn't fall into nice, 
you know, perfect, you know, clean square boxes. Uh, there's a little bit of deviation. Don't let that throw you. The idea is when you plot this, you get something that is a straight line, pretty much a straight line. Okay, so because it's a straight line, well, because this kinetic data gives you a straight line, that implies that you have a first order reaction. <clears throat> that means that your rate law is k times the N2O5 to the first power, and that means your integrated rate law is, oops, uh, let's write it down here. The logarithm of the concentration of N2O5 equals minus k times t plus the logarithm of the initial concentration of N2O5. So that's what's happening here. Logarithm and the initial concentration was 0 0.100. So we have our, we identified that it's first order. We can go ahead and write a differential rate law for it. We can write an integrated rate law for it. Everything is good. Now the second part is, how do we find the rate constant? Okay, well we have the straight line the rate constant is, so let me go ahead and move to the next page. So the rate constant is the slope, the negative slope of that line. So the slope equals negative k. So now all we have to do, we take two points on that line. Doesn't matter which two points. Now, when you're taking points on a line, on a straight line for a graph, you can only use points on that line. So we just said that real kinetic data doesn't always give you an exactly straight line. So you're going to have a best fit line, okay? And you're going to do a least squares fit on that line. Well, when you pick two points randomly on there, you don't pick two data points unless those data points actually happen to be on the line. If they're not, you pick points on that line. There you go. You have your two points. You do delta y over delta x, set it equal to minus k, and you solve for k. When we take a couple of points on the graph that we just did in the previous slide, we end up with the following. We end up with minus 6.93 times 10 to the negative 3, and the unit is per second, equals minus k. Slope equals minus k. Negative equals negative. So k the rate constant equals 6.93 times 10 to the negative 3 per second. That is our rate constant. <clears throat> so what we did, we were given kinetic data, time, concentration. We plotted time on the x-axis and the logarithm of the concentration on the y-axis. If you get a straight line, it's a first order reaction. If you don't get a straight line, it's not a first order reaction. So it works both ways. If you do get a straight line, the slope of that straight line is negative of the, um, of the reaction constant, K. Okay. 